Hi, welcome to the Northern Blossom Soap Company YouTube channel. My name is Kelly and I'm a soap artist. I'm here today to show you the making of our first fall product line soap, which is scheduled to release on Friday, September 28th. That is, everything in our fall line is going to release on the 28th and I'm going to try to put a video up of making every single kind of soap that's going to be launched on that day. So today is the first one that I am making for this and it is the pumpkin pie soap, which didn't exactly turn out how I had envisioned it. Um, my fragrance oil was a little bit finicky. Since making the soap, I did go back and look at the website for the fragrance oil, and they said it didn't accelerate trace, and nobody in the reviews said it accelerated trace, but in my experience, it definitely accelerated my trace, so uh, I didn't exactly get to do what I wanted to with the frosting on top, but I still think it came out pretty good. Just a little bit of proof that things don't always go the way we plan, but I worked with it and I think that it looks nice and I'm really excited to show you guys, so let's make some soap. So we are here to make the pumpkin pie soap. and. My oils, as always, and my lye. I'm sure by now, if any of you have been watching any of my previous videos, you know what happens next. So, put my stick blender in. Burp it out. And pour in my lye water. There's no bubbles, so I'm going to start blending. stick blending for now. So the fragrance we're using today is pumpkin walnut biscotti from Nature's Garden and it smells great. It smells just like like fresh apple pie with a bit of nuttiness to it. It smells really, really good, but um, it has vanilla in it, so it means it's gonna turn the soap brown. So I don't want the whole soap to be brown, so I'm gonna separate some pieces off of it before I put in the fragrance so that way I can get some colors in. And for colors today, we're gonna use a little bit of titanium dioxide and then for our accent colors, other than the brown that this is going to turn, we are using Sahara Gold Mica from Nurture Soap. It's really pretty. It's a really nice gold color. And we are also going to use Copper Penny Mica from Nurture Soap. That is also super pretty. And then I'm going to put a little bit of cocoa powder in the base. Even though the fragrance will turn it brown, I just want to make sure it's a nice consistent brown. And I like the, um, the cocoa powder will kind of leave a bit of a speckly look in it. And I think that would be really fitting for a pumpkin pie soap. So that is what we are going to do today. So I'm going to pour off uh, the 42 ounces for my frosting first. So I have one here for my white. And then for my two accent colors, so I'm going to pour the two accent colors off of the main batch. I 
I'm going to pour a little bit off of this one because I want to do a little bit of white on the top of the soap. That is what this is for. That should be plenty for what I want. So I'm going to go ahead and pour the fragrance into these white containers here. Uh, I'm going to try to put you know, the respective amount based on you know, this is a bit more that's going in the base and this is for the frosting. So I'm going to measure that out real quick. Well, I just made a little bit of a boo-boo. I'm going to edit it out of the video. But basically what happened was I had this thing set aside for the Copper Penny Mica and I poured in the cocoa by accident, which I didn't really want because then it would just basically be the same exact shade as the base. So instead I have decided to, I poured the cocoa and that was in here with that mixture back into the base. And before I did that, I took a little bit more out so it does have the fragrance in it, but I'm still gonna put in the copper penny and we'll see what happens. You know, maybe I'll get lucky and that copper penny color will still show through. I guess it'll be a little bit of an experiment. We'll see what happens. It really is a gorgeous, gorgeous color, so I hope it doesn't get too overrun by the, the discoloration of the vanilla. So, sometimes things like that happen. I got distracted. There was a truck a construction vehicle outside and I was watching it through the window. I wasn't really thinking about what I was doing. And, but it's all right. And it'll turn out fine anyway. So I'm just going to stick pulling these colors in real quick. Actually, now that I'm looking at that all mixed up, I think I'm going to put a little bit of bronze brown wake in here just to really make sure I don't want to risk that not turning as brown as I want it to. And that little bit of cocoa powder wasn't quite enough. There, that is a really nice rich brown color. That's what we want to see. how much you guys can see here. I, when I uh, rearranged the soap room, I did have my tripod and camera up on the table, but you know, every time I moved the camera and tripod would shake. So I put it on the floor and my tripod only goes up to about 50 inches. And my table's pretty high because I don't like to be bent over while I'm working. Like a kitchen counter is way too low for me, you know, so I have my shelf up a little, quite high. So I, you know, I'm afraid you guys are only seeing the edge. So this is the color brown that we have here. And then this is that copper penny. Turns a really nice orange. And that's the Sahara gold. So I'm gonna go get my mold since this is all ready to be poured in. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a drop swirl. I'm going to pour almost this entire base in. And then I'm going to drop in the darkest and then the lightest of these two. And then maybe just top it off with a little bit more of this brown. So that is pretty much all of the brown. All that's left is the scrapings in the bowl, but I'm going to leave that to put on top. I'm going to make sure this is all nice and stirred in. I do think this fragrance might accelerate trace a little bit, since my batter is usually very, very runny still at this point, but that's not always a bad thing. Sometimes I get aggravated when it's still too runny and I have to work slowly 
So that way, you know, if I want to do a swirl, but I don't want them to all just get muddled together, then I have to work really slow. So I'm just going to go right down the center. And I'm going to try to keep it all on the center with this one, I think. I think that's how I want to do things at this time. I'm curious to see how much this fragrance is going to change the color of this gold since I, you know, accidentally fragranced it. So that'll be fun to cut in the morning and see what's going on. So I'm going to do the same thing with this one, just right down the center. down. That's just to make sure that there's no air bubbles in it and I figured while well, my mold isn't overflowing like it usually is by the time I've topped it off, you know, because at that point I'm too scared to smack it down because I'm afraid I'm just going to spill it everywhere. So I figured I'd do it while it's still nice and not all the way full yet. So I guess now I'll just Come back in with the rest of the brown. Soaping is always such a mess, which is kind of counterintuitive because you think soap and you think about getting clean, but the soap making process is very messy. So the reason I'm going back over it with this brown here, this isn't something I had originally planned on doing with this soap, but I just got a supply order in from Nurture Soap with my colorants in, and um, they sent me this little um, spray bottle, and then you put your mica powder or glitter in here, and it has this cute little spray nozzle, and you just spray it, and you make a mica line, which obviously I don't have anything in there yet, so it's not doing anything, and for those of you who might not know, a mica line is just a line through your soap where I would take like this dry powder. So in this particular instance, I want to do it with this gold. I would take this powder and either, usually what I do is I take a sifter and I sprinkle it over the top and it makes a little gold or a little, you know, gold line in the soap when you cut it. And the sifter is really annoying though because it's messy and sometimes the, you know, it clumps up in the sifter and you can't get it to come out. I have that problem with glitter a lot. So this is nice because it also helps you get it really even too and you just spray it and you make a mica line. So I topped it off with this brown because if I just had put the gold on top and then sprayed it with the gold mica, you wouldn't even be able to see it when I cut the bars. So that is why I put the brown there, because I want it to be a nice stark contrast, which there's not quite as much brown on this end over here, so there might not be as much contrast. But, you know, the rest of that was, you know, only going to affect like one bar maybe, so. Alright, so I'm back now to pipe. My um, frosting is definitely getting thick. Hopefully I can still pipe it. So I got this gold bio glitter, it's biodegradable glitter from Nurture Soap. I thought it was really, really pretty. You could feel the heat that is coming off of this soap right now. It is very, very, very hot. Yeah, that fragrance oil is definitely doing something. So for the top here I have this white. Um, I'm just going to maybe I should let this thicken up a bit. So I thought I would dollop it on top, make it kind of look a little bit like like a dollop of Cool Whip or something on top of your pumpkin pie. And then I have these really cute embeds I'm excited to show you that I'm going to put on top. I think that this is solid enough to hold its shape. So let's try it. Actually, I really like the way that looks. I like that little bit of 
how it's kind of sliding down the, the side there. It looks like some like homemade whipped cream or something. Get it down this back side. Originally I had pictured a dollop, but it doesn't seem like anything about this soap is going how I pictured it. So I'm just going to take what I get and not complain about it. Because as long as I can cut it tomorrow and it is soap and it smells good, I'm going to be pretty happy at this point. So, this is the highlight, honestly, you guys. The cutest little embeds. These little pumpkins here that I molded out of cold process soap dough. So how that works is I make my normal soap recipe just like you guys have watched me do, albeit it goes a little bit more smoothly than this. And I, um, instead of, you know, because soap has a lot of water in it, and it, the bars won't get hard until all the water has dried out. That's why there's a cure time with cold process soap. That's why I always say, you know, it'll be four to six weeks after I cut the bars that they're ready to use. It's all that water has to dry up, so the bar gets hard. But if you pour the soap and you cover it and don't let that water evaporate out, it will stay really soft. So that's what we do to get soap dough. We don't let it dry out, and then it becomes like moldable, like Play-Doh kind of, and so it's really fun to work with. So I've marked out, that's why I'm trying to clean this off. I marked out where my bar cuts are gonna be so I can see where I need to set a pumpkin. And also the good thing about this white here is it's gonna help these pumpkins stick on really well. So I'm gonna come over here and get some more little guys. All right. So there was that one. That one's actually a little out or in a bit far. It needs to go out a bit more. And we have this one. I might end up slicing the edge of this little one off on accident. My pumpkins are a bit fatter than my bars are. They're, they're about the same exact width as how wide my, bi my bars are supposed to be. So it's going to be kind of close. When I'm cutting to not just slice a pumpkin in half, which hopefully I don't end up doing. But well, I guess this could have turned out worse. I've definitely made worse. It's not exactly what I wanted, but just gotta think fast, I guess, and make do with what we can get. Um, I might make up some little vines to go on the side here out of more cold process soap dough. Actually, I think I am going to do that. And then I will be back to cut this in the morning. Well, we're back today to cut this. I think I might call it pumpkin patch instead of pumpkin pie because um, after... I finished putting all of this glooping, all of this frosting on top, um, and I put the pumpkins on, I was thinking, and I really wanted to make sure that the soap really popped, even though the frosting didn't exactly turn out the way I wanted it to. So I came back through with some green cold process soap dough, and I made these little vines on the top here. And I think you guys can see, but let me get you in for like a little bit of a close-up. I got these vines going across the top, and then these are little leaves here. And so each bar will get, you know, some vines and like two or three leaves. And so I think it kind of looks more like a pumpkin patch than a pumpkin pie soap. So I'm kind of thinking about calling it pumpkin patch, but we'll see. Um, so I don't know how the inside looks yet. I haven't even cut the other end at all either. So we're going to find out together. So 
I'm trying not to slice my pumpkins in half. That is the goal here. Ooh, and I do like the way that looks inside. Um, I like the color of the, the copper. I think that came out really nice. Um, I have to say I'm not crazy impressed with the way the gold ended up. Um, I looked online like a lot more of a gold color, but that's all right. And then this frosting, I just left it uncolored. I'm kind of curious to see how it will change from the fragrance, but you, I don't, you guys might be able to see, you might not. There's a little gold mica line here, and there's one here too, so. They're not exactly what I had wanted, you know, but I think that the pumpkin on top and the little vines might, you know, make up for a bit of the ugliness inside the bar. 